Hello and welcome to the first episode of the unofficial Nitro Rallycross podcast. Quite a mouthful, but we promise it'll be worth it. I am one of your hosts, Team Albus Daly, and joining me on this new and exciting adventure is none other than Nabila Tejbach. How are you? I am doing well. How about yourself? I'm pretty good, thank you. And quite interested to get into this. So as everyone watching and listening to this probably summarised from the name, we're here to talk about Nitro Rallycross. We're going to tell you what it is today, where it came from, hopefully how it works, who's involved, what the 2022-2023 season will look like, and kind of what we're expecting to see from it. So we're not going to waste any time, and I think we're just going to go straight into it and ask the question of what is Nitro Rallycross? And put simply, it is the brainchild of Rallycross driver Travis Pastrana, which, awesome name, I've got to say, last name at least for me. Um, He wanted to take Rallycross to the next level, and that's essentially what he's done here. It's in the same kind of fashion that Extreme E tests both the car and the drivers to well, the extreme Nitro RX does just that for Rallycross. And there were two one-off events in 2018 and 2019, which Travis himself organized. He built a nice track out in the desert in America, because where else would you do this? And it had an insane jump as part of it, which I think if I remember correctly, like something silly, like 100 feet or something like something close to that, which as kind of a spectator and as a driver, you think that's pretty damn cool. Um, obviously, it's rallying, so there was a Hanson involved somewhere. And in this case, there were two of them. And naturally, both of them won. Well, Timmy won in 2018, and then Kevin won the event in 2019. Um, and that's not really too surprising. It's what they do. Um, yeah, and- I mean, you can't have a rally cross event without them, can you? No, and be no such thing. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it wouldn't feel right. <laughs> you kind of like it's a rite of passage at that point. You need to have at least one of them involved. And they kind of treated the whole because they, because they were one of the events and seeing if it worked for starters. I mean, it would could have never got to this point. Um, but they kind of treated it as their their version of an Indy 500 or a Super Bowl. And there's a great amount of marketing that can come with that then when you bill it as such. And from the looks mm-hmm. of the crowd, that from the YouTube videos I was watching, they got decent turnout um, and seemed like quite an enjoyable event. And as someone who is more from an F1 IndyCar W Series kind of background, I wasn't totally sure what the heck was going on for the start of it, but it intrigued me. And again, if, if, if nothing else, he was right about the jump. It did look like a lot of fun, especially when you've got multiple cars flying over that at the same time so I, I think that probably did the same for you oh definitely I think watching it was um one of those things I mean rallycross is already fun to watch there's a lot of almost mm. into each other or knocking each other off the track which I think makes it more exciting and um having that and having the opportunity to have that massive jump just kind of took it to that next level as well with the bank corner it's more or less straight after on the other side on that particular course it was kind of you always have that conversation of what would you do if you could design a racetrack? And you kind of, for me, I'm looking at F1 tracks, like, right, we'll take this bit from here, we'll take this bit from here. And it was essentially like having a straight from Monza and then you have a banking from Zandvoort straight after to test people out. But because it's Rallycross, you have so many different lines that you can take there on yeah. a completely yeah. different surface that it got quite entertaining quite quickly. And, quite, and I mean, that's exactly what he wanted from it. And he got that. Um, yeah, yeah, massive oops. amounts of drifting, massive amounts of air on a jump. He got everything he could possibly want out of a track, and I think he it was very impressive how they built it. I was going to say definitely. I mean, it's it's one thing to get fan satisfaction and another thing to get drive satisfaction, and when you can get both of those with a brand new track, I don't know when the last time we properly saw that was in in any kind of motorsport. I'm I'm trying to think like you're more likely to get that in rallying or something like this because I'm just thinking F1 like they enjoy the track, but it's yeah. it's not quite there. Um, but the two events were really popular. So in 2021, after a year's substance, because pandemic, um, there was a five-round season across America, which saw um, the founder and racer, Travis Drummer. He won the supercar class on countback, of all things, after being equal on points with Scott Speed, which, oh, you've got to be a little bit annoyed if you're Scott Speed there. <laughs> I would say so, yeah. I think what was really exciting, though, is it went down to the end and Mm -hmm. um, it was a competitive season all around. Like, you had the Hansons on par with them. Like, there was no one outstanding person the entire series. It was very much a mixture and kind of like 
Mm. Well, we don't know who's going to be the winner. And I think that made it very exciting. Especially when you've got a host of drivers, which we'll get into in a little bit, who was involved there. But sort of not one different backgrounds, but just such a wealth of experience among them. I mean, and not to make too many comparisons here to extreme, but in terms of like you've got so many championships in that one series, and it's kind of the equivalent mm. of that in a way of like, you've got Hansons, you've got Ekstrom, you've got Strami, you've got Speed, you've got Ken Block. It's like, and then you can see them all really fighting it out on more or less equal yeah. playing field there. It's great to see that and really, it, it kind of, it's frustrating if you're Scott Speed that you lost by such a small margin, but at the same time, it's extra satisfying to see that because you know then that they are really pushing each other and they are all brilliant for their own reasons and still can take it to each other in that, in that way. Oh, exactly. And I mean, they're also very competitive, like rallying against each other too. So it kind of led hand in hand for a whole season for both of them in their respective championships. Mm. And um, I think if this year can lead to an exciting championship like that, I think Nitro Rally Cross has the opportunity to be one of the super fun series is to watch where you're like nail biting down to the finish like we had an F1 last year. Who doesn't mm. like a series like that? <laughs> Oh, exactly. And I mean, uh, that is as good a segue as any for me to go into what we're going to be doing for 2022, 2023. I say we like we're going to be racing in it, but, you know, maybe I mean, we'll, I'd like to. Maybe we'll get lucky <laughs> at some point. It's a long season. Who knows? Exactly. Um, you know, but after, after two categories, <laughs> exactly. I say someone needs just a one off. How, how hard can it be? We'll just give it a go. So yeah, natural progression, then you have two one-off events, then they had the, the season across America, so the next obvious step up was make it global. And mm-hmm. they have done that, which is exactly what the calendar looks like for, for this year slash next year. It's a bit like Formula E in that sense, you have the whole one season over two years kind of deal. So um, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, it works. So go for it. With the first round being at Lydon Hill in the UK, Weekend after next time of recording. So when you're watching this, it'll probably be this weekend. Um, so June 18th to 19th. Then there's a bit of a bit of a gap of roughly a month or so. And then they'll go off to mm-hmm. Sweden and have a nice round there, which again, I remember watching one of the videos where he where Travis was explaining about what he wants from the series, and it was what you're gonna probably have similar tracks and conditions and this kind of thing. Um across the season he wants as many different ones in there as he can get and it from him i'll keep reading the calendar in a second but you will definitely get that here in terms of you'll get desert you'll get snow you'll get mud you'll get a little bit of tarmac in there probably somewhere um so then we've got another big gap august end of august 27 28 they're going to finland then there's a massive gap october 1st to 2nd the next one minneapolis minnesota which Mm -hmm. that time of year could be very interesting um, especially then at the end of the month, 29th to 30th of October, you get to hopefully fix that and go and get a bit of a tan maybe in LA, in California. Um, then very quick pit stop up the road, November 10th, November 12th, sorry, to 13th, going to Phoenix in Arizona. And then things get very, very hot because you're going to go to Saudi in December 10th to 11th before they kind of weirdly, I would figure they maybe do this the other way, but they're not, so here we are. January 21st, 22nd, go back to Quebec in Canada, which if anyone's ever been to Canada, you know that that's going to be quite chilly. Um, Maybe not as chilly as Alberta on the 4th and 5th of February, but it's going to give it a run for its money. And then there is a final round in the US on March 23rd, but we don't currently have a location for that, but could be anywhere from the calendar from last year that they haven't already used. So it could be Florida, I mean, March. And things should be not too chilly and you might be trying to find that kind of balance between winter and spring and find something suitably muddy to, to sort themselves out with. But what do you think of the calendar? I think it's awesome. They've definitely got a mixture of everything in there. It will be nice to see, you know, classic rally track at the New Hill. Mm. Sorry, rally cross track. I, you know, being from rally, that's just my first instinct. But um, yeah, I'm definitely excited to see how it all progresses. And I like the fact that it's kind of spread out because I feel like you're definitely going to get some seasonal changes in there. And then all of a sudden going out to Saudi again in December, I think it's just going to keep everyone on their toes. And I would definitely be interested to see what happens in that March slot. You could definitely be down in Florida, which would be cool. I mean, up the road for me now. And um, 
I would also like to see the original track come back though, because he built it specifically. So I wonder if he's holding yeah. out for. I wonder if he's holding that out for that because. You're great one to have for a season like finale if you didn't go to Florida. Yeah, I agree. And um, no, I think the it's going to be an exciting calendar, and and there's a lot of new well, a couple of new drivers this year. So I'm going to be interested to see how they adapt because there's some that are already coming back, but at least they're not all the same tracks. So hmm. yeah. I'm sorry, I, I think as well the good thing about it being so spread out. I mean, the obvious comparison there would be Formula One that has an absolutely stacked calendar, and it's yeah. getting to the point now where casual fans and even some of the more dedicated ones are deciding which races to prioritize over other ones in case they need to which yeah. is never a great thing whereas with this you've got what is it 10 rounds spread out over quite a quite a margin um yeah. and some big gaps in between i mean i think the closest ones are the couple in october and november uh, but mm -hmm. even then it's that point point of view where unless you're in australia or maybe in south america where it is still a little bit warmer you're probably not going to mind staying inside and watching that over the alternative at a weekend. So they've done that quite cleverly, I think. And again, it just, it seems very global and I'm very much looking forward to seeing. I mean, again, we've got ideas in our head of what each of the tracks could look like, but that could be mm -hmm. very different from what we see on the day itself. Definitely, definitely. But that now leads us into how is this whole thing actually going to work? <laughs> so... I'm not going to lie, this took a little bit of like getting used to. And I think once you watch them, especially going back and watching like previous years, it's definitely a little bit more explanatory, self-explanatory. But um, it's going to start off in solo qualifying. So everyone will do their fastest lap and that will then put them into order for the battle qualifying with head to head in a tournament style bracket where first person goes with last person, second with second last, et cetera, et cetera. And you will end up with the people who will be, I guess, in theoretical pole, because it does actually end up the next day starting off with two races again. So whoever wins those battle brackets, you'll get one championship point. Everyone's after championship points. Um, day two is actually quite a stacked day because you have heat semi-final, last chance qualifying and the final. So the heats are going to start off with the 16 cars, two separate races. They'll do five laps with usually a joker lap in rallycross. And then the top two of each race will trans will go directly to the final. And then there'll be a semi-final, which will have the cars who didn't make it in. Yeah. The cars who didn't make it in that semi-final. And then they'll have a launch chance qualifying for the people, the four cars from semi-final will go directly to the final with the other four cars from the two heats. Then out of the rest of them, they're going to do another one and another two cars will go to the final, ending up with 10 cars in the final. And then it will be down where you place and finish. That will be awarded the points. We promise it makes more Tried sense. Tried to make that make sense. sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but basically... If you win, you don't have to race in the other two races. That's basically what you're going for here. You just go just straight win. to the final. It's a lot easier. Yes. Yeah. Then you don't have to worry about the rest. That's, that's what gonna, I'd that's be going be for right. if I were any else. drivers that ask us for whatever reason they think just asking win. us is the right thing to do. <laughs> yes. I promise it will be more explanatory when we uh, follow up on the next races and you can actually watch it for yourselves. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it took a little bit to get ahead around, but honestly, it, it does make sense. And it theoretically seems like it's designed to get as much racing action into two days as is physically possible. Um, yeah. To get this, there's like, a like we can see, there's not many laps in each race, but because of the nature of them and because there's always something at play that you can get from it, um, there are stakes at all the time then. So it makes that a, bit, that a bit more exciting for both the drivers and hopefully for us watching. That's the plan. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. And I think the nature of Rallycross just generally gives it a little bit more entertainment. I mean, some of these only take five minutes total per, per heat. And then mm. they're eventually going to be very good at going around that track. But also you've got to remember that on a Rallycross track, you're going to get ruts and stuff appear as the track is progressively used more. So you get kind of variables in that sense as well. And so it just, it, it's... I mean, we're saying just win. That could be the easiest way, but it could also be 
potential disadvantage because if you win mm -hmm. and then you don't have to race until the final, the track could have evolved a lot by the time you actually then get to the final. And you might just suddenly be thinking, okay, I'm a pretty good rally driver or racing driver in general, but this is going to be tricky now. It's going to be a challenge. I can't just walk off with this. Yeah. And I think that leads us great into who's taking part this year. I'm not going to lie. I'm an, I am excited for this driver lineup for this year yeah, because it's, it's, we're I seeing mean, some names appear that A, have never, I think, done it before and B, kind of swapping their skills a little bit. Which, which is exciting to see in its own respect. I mean, we've mentioned earlier previous years have seen both Hanson brothers, Tanner Faust, Ken Block, Matty Sextrom, Scott Speed, but we've got a few old returning faces. Like you say, we've got some new additions, which is just kind of, it's exciting to see that some of them as well, they've kind of, they've been racing for a long time in whatever category. They've then gone and had a break and gone off and done whatever, had a family and all that fun stuff. And now they're like... Nah, I want. I'm, I'm get that got that itch again, and I don't want to. I can't go back to where I was, so let's try something different. And this is definition of that. Um, what's exciting about this year is there's going to be four categories. The first one, which obviously is going to be the most exciting one, is the new Group E car that they're making. That they have tried to um, kind of go back to like the good old Group B rallycross days but is going to be fully electric because you know in motorsport now we're all about the environment and everything's going fully electric and this is going to have a 1070 peak horsepower which is awesome i think it's going to be quite fast yeah and um i mean the talk that's going to come out of that's just going to be insane and that's going to be the main class at rallycross which will replace the uh, standard car the standard cars of last year I don't know mm. if that's even a word that you can use, but I guess they were the standard cars they used standard, last year. Standard uh, as much so. as you can have for this kind of sport. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything's different standard in themselves. But um, what's exciting is Vermont Sports Cars actually created their own, so they're steering away from the Subaru car, and they are building their very own Group E. And if you haven't seen a photo of it, I really do highly recommend going to look at it because it's very, very beautiful. Work of art. If they made a road car like that, I, I would drive it and I don't love an electric car. I'm a petrol head and I always will be, but that is a very nice looking car. And with them will obviously be Travis Pastrana, uh, last year's championship winner. And um, Connor Martell will be joining him. And then the next team is going to be Excite Energy Racing. And then Which, no have... pun intended, I'm quite excited about. Right. I think mm -hmm. what's exciting about this team is they're going to have a driver switch out. So Oliver Bennett will be in one car. And then Jensen Button from Formula One days, so, yes, Formula One days is stepping into Rallycross, which I think is going to be really interesting. And we've got a nice familiar returning face for me of uh, WRC driver Chris Meek. Now they're going to be splitting the car with Chris Meek doing the European events and Saudi Arabia, and then Jensen Button hopping in for the US rounds. And I'm intrigued to see how both of them fare. I mean, I, I, I do tech. wonder with with Jensen because he did the he, I think at least the one round of Extreme E for his own team in there, and then gave it yes. up to Kevin Hansen because he thought this is a better idea. Let someone who knows what they're doing do this. But I, clearly, I'm thinking that left a bit of a an itch that he wanted to scratch, and Molly was like, "Hmm, I'm going to keep an eye on that." And like, I've got potentially something for you. Do you want to come over here? And I love that we get that now. Absolutely. And I think what's going to what's gonna definitely show is I think it will be a fairly strong team. I mean, Oliver Bennett comes from doing British Rallycross, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So he has um, spent some time in a Rallycross car. And I mean, Chris Meek is rally. As long as he can and, uh, and use Bennett's his handbrake, which I would a couple of hope times so. Well, over the past couple of years. In, in yes, this he has. As well, so he knows what he's doing. Yes, it's going to be a fun lineup. And then... Um, they're going to be followed up by two other teams, DRR, JC, with a returning Andreas Backard. You can't really go again, Rallycross, without him in it. I definitely see his name pop up quite a lot. And then he's going to be joined by Robin Larson and Fraser McConnell. And then the last team, OMFC, with Oliver and Kevin Erickson. I think, personally, this is a very strong lineup for this category. And... Um, I think it could be quite competitive. I know people are going to sit there and go, well, it's likely going to be Travis Pastrana's. But you've got a couple of people that could really throw a spanner in the works. I was going to say, I wouldn't 
say that would be a runaway conclusion just yet, especially especially if we haven't even had a race yet. But it's it's again, it's I think that's the whole point. He, it, he obviously wants to race in what he's created, but it only it took him a couple of goes yes. to actually win at it properly. So I mean, both event both events were as a one off. It was the Hanson brothers taking him to the cleaners, which. You think on one hand he's happy about, but on the other hand he was very glad that he managed to get it last year. So, oh yeah, definitely. But I feel like the Kevin, uh, the, Ke- the Kevin brothers. What am I talking about? The Hanson brothers, Kevin and Timmy. They um, definitely have a lot of experience in this kind of thing, and obviously with Extreme E, their whole year kind of paired really nicely to give them that great, well, swapping in and out of cars basically, mm. kind of just keeping you on top of their trade the whole time and. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever rule out Andreas either. I think oh. he has every chance of being high up there. So and it's probably also worth noting that despite coming from an F1 background and then doing super, uh, GT cars ish in um, Japan for a couple of, for a season or yeah. two, he has been doing some training with Bennett on some dirt tracks. So it's he's not going to come into this thinking, "What the hell am I doing?" He's going to have a rough idea of what's going on. So you never know. He was a half decent exactly. driver, wasn't he? So, I mean, yeah, he definitely was. I think, I think it's going to just make it more exciting. And then mm. I hope Chris Meeks still got his uh, rally mind inside of him because he might need it. But um, I, I was excited to see him come back. At least it's been a while since he's been out driving, and and I think this will, you know, kind of get him back into his uh, fighting spirit again. Because he's not gonna, even though it's a split team, he's not gonna not try and go for wins. Oh no, definitely. Not. Kind of right. even more motivation to do that in a way because you've got less opportunity to do it and make sure that yeah. if you want to come back either with them or with another team, yeah, look what I can do when I'm not even committed for 100 percent of the races. Exactly. Exactly. So then we have the other. We have the second category, which is cross car category. Which I will admit, I'll take you through the list of drivers now, but. As I'm relatively new to this run, I'm going to rely on you slightly here for any names that might stand out because this is not my area of expertise. But we have, and oh, I'm going to have some fun with pronunciations here, and I apologize in advance. (laughs) Um, Riku Huka is going to be on the grid. And then Ronald Baldins, Jimmy Ostenberg, Thomas Eek Must, not Mustard, but Mustard, which uh, Mm -hmm. apologies, Thomas, for that one. Percy Pentinen, Isaac Egnosson. Frida Enholm, Sebastian Enholm, so I'm guessing they're related, Alexander Gustafsson and Kelly Gotherson. Any names there standing out for you for who we should be looking out for or absolutely no clue we're going to go into this blind like everyone else? Honestly, I think that's just going to be an open free for all in the cross car. Nothing, I don't know personally. The cars themselves are fun to to watch racing so I think you could stick a bunch of people in there and you can just have a lot of fun even if you don't know who they are definitely I would say (laughs) it's just going to be a fun category and anyone really has the options so as you say there's there's nothing wrong with that that could be a lot of fun to to just watch and again it's it's that kind of if we're having these drivers in the um, electric cars that we kind of have a rough idea of for most of them it's kind of not to diminish the, the cross car category, but in terms of when you watch Formula 3, you're like, who are all these people? But you're still loving it because it's just chaos and you just yeah. you get so much drug out of it. So I think that would be the equivalent in that way, but on the same level playing field, if that makes sense. I don't want to make it seem Absolutely. like it's a junior category. <laughs> no, no, I think it's going to be really exciting. And the cross car is going to be completely different to that Group E car. It's just going to be a whole different style of racing going in. And um, yeah, it'll be exciting. And do you know what? I love these subcategories, though, because it's not all about that top category anyway. I mean, racing is the whole weekend and mixing it in with different race. You don't mind anything else, really. Exactly. You get to know the people afterwards. Yeah. Like, okay, you were clearly good. Who the heck are you? (laughs) Yeah, precisely. So that leads nicely into the third category, which is aptly named the next category. So we've got, again, few different drivers in there. We've got Casper Janssen, Ollie Henry mm-hmm. Steinsholt, Tommy Harman, Simon Olofsson, George Medjines. We'll go with that. Lane Bacala, Michaela Arlen-Kotlinski, which I'm quite excited about, and Kyle Schwartz. 
which again, like I was saying, Michaela is the one that interests me there just because I've seen what she can do in Extreme E. And yeah. if anyone saw Bovington from last year, for, for starters, the stuff she was pulling off there was quite fun. And yeah, quite she's, yeah, she's got quite the varied racing skill, to be fair. Mm. Um, I mean, her brother, Frederick, was all about rallying. So she's obviously learned a trick or two from him, 100%. But um, she started off racing, so I find it really intriguing mm. how well she's doing with kind of the switch. But they always do say, if you start off, yeah, definitely. And I think we always do see that more, though, that a racing driver will go rallying or rally cross, but a rally driver doesn't tend to necessarily go the other way around. No, no. So, um, but I think, yeah, she, she'll, she'll be good and it'll be interesting. And I think the whole category, again, is going to be really interesting and how they've got that, like, next like the Nitro Rally Cross next category. It's kind of showing who could potentially step up into that Group E car mm -hmm. again, there's in no the next year or so. Directly why they can't be switching around after after the season. Yeah. Again. It's, it's not kind of, you need X qualification to go into this car. It's just, we've seen you're good here. Let's test you in this one and see what you're able to see, but maybe if you can adapt to it as well. Um, exactly. But again, and I mean, I was going to say, Michaela there, is, is the one that I'm most looking forward to because again, if you if you don't know anything about her and you see her, you think, oh, she's harmless and ho ho ho. No, it's it's <laughs> she's like the it's like the equivalent of a honey badger there. If we're going to have a Ricardo reference, it's like, oh, look at this nice thing. Oh, Jesus, she's coming after me now. Um, yeah. Any of the other drivers in that list standing out to you, or again, a bit like the previous category? And it's just. I think it's going to be like the previous category. I um. I'm excited to learn more and see what more of them can do because I know a few of the drivers in this category do have good records in like national championships for rallycross and things like that. And so I think it will be very exciting all around. And I think that's the main thing that's going to get me for this, for this year's Nitro Rallycross. I'll be honest, it's been one of those things that's always like just that one-off race. Mm -hmm. And I think having a whole championship could be one of those championships you see and go, do you know what? I may get behind this because it's fun. It's and new it's nice to be able to get in at the ground level. It's just like you've yes. got a little homework to do, but it's not 70 plus years of history. You can exactly. Just, it's a couple of races. I can do that. Yeah. It's going to be a fun thing with like Extreme E and bringing Rallycross again to the more like forefront. And hmm. it will be nice to see more Rallycross going on because I think as a series, it's super fun to watch. I mean, you've got five incredible laps incredible drivers going around it they throw in a joker lap which can completely change from who's leading to them being at the bottom and that's what always interests me the most about rallycross i mean you watch it and one car's pretty much there the whole time they'll go for the joker lap and they could go slightly at the wrong time and then all of a sudden they're at the bottom end of the leaderboard also there's some uh, little knock you can knock each other really and get away with it in rallycross yeah. can't really get away with that anywhere else but um yeah, I, I think as well fun the season. benefit of this season, not only just going global, is that in the same way that IndyCar has perhaps got an uptake, an uptake in viewership of the last year or two is because of who's involved driver-wise. Yes. I mean, in IndyCar, you've seen people from F1 and Europe more often coming into the American motorsport, whereas in this one, you might get some F1 fans, you might get some other fans from other bits of motorsport from other drivers coming in because you've got Jensen there like, Oh, Jensen's doing this thing, which is, like you say, not brand new, but more or less brand new. So you don't need to think too much about it. You just need to sit back and enjoy it. And exactly. you tell me Jensen Button's in a race. I'm only human. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch it. So that's yeah. oh, that's me convinced. Um, and that could, think... for, for something coming in where it's going global for the first time, that's exactly what they need for marketing and to get that general audience in there. There's just a little bit of everything. And that's, yeah. that's key. I mean, Travis has proved this is a good track record event in the US. I mean, the guy is a marketing king out here. Anyone you speak of the word rally or anything and their first instinct goes straight to Travis Pastrana. So he is a marketing king. And I think introducing this series into going global, but also having had drivers like the Hanson brothers and things in the past, there's already a good following there. So this is now just mm. making global and making it bigger because if you're already doing saying, something, it was the, well, it was why the not just make step. it bigger? Yeah. I think it's going to be a great series and I'm very excited to follow it. Any final thoughts that you have before we, we wrap up for this one? 
let's just get this season underway. It's only a week to go, so I'm excited to start watching it. So we will be back for a review episode after the first round, where hopefully if you were confused by any of this, it will all be very clear once you've watched the first round and we'll do our best to explain it all then. Um, in the meantime, if you want to, if you've enjoyed seeing us and you've enjoyed listening to us about talk all this, then obviously like, subscribe or whatever it is you will do on whichever platform you're listening or watching this on. Um, if you also like us, which would be a bonus really for us, because we know we're doing something right, then you can find me over on my multiple interview series on the curbs, as well as over on the Undercut podcast, which is a nice F1 style podcast. Um, and I'm also over on Is It Fast for any multiple articles and obviously find me on Instagram. Nabila, you're also on Instagram. Is there anywhere else you want to plug while you're here and I give you the opportunity? <laughs> yeah, um, you can also find me on TikTok, you know, find my way eventually on that. Um, hoping to find myself back in a car anytime soon and uh, over at Goodwood. So if you're around, come find me. Happy to chat all the time. And we will stick. All of the all of those details in the description below so you don't have to just keep going back and checking this bit of video again. So that's about it. Now, as you were saying, let's just get dive, let's get straight into it for the first race season, and I can't wait to get stuck in. So we will see you next time. <laughs>